The following is a paid program and does not necessarily reflect the views or ideas of the staff or management of KWSH or the 110 Broadcast Group. Good morning, good morning, Histe. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Simulation Radio Program. I'm your host, Bo White Killer. Uh, today is August 10th. August 10th. Uh, going to be a hot one. Going to be a hot one. I'm looking at the TV. I've got the TV screen behind me, so when you see the video playback, uh, uh, you'll see what's uh, what's on the uh, the viewing screen for Dennis when he's uh, doing his thing. He's always watching the the, the weather. And uh, listen to what Lacey Swope always has to say. So, but it is going to be a hot one. Stay hydrated. Uh, stay indoors if you have to. Uh, check on your pets. Uh, look after our elders. But uh, it is summertime, so we got to be mindful of everything. And of course, we're reminded when that sweat goes down the middle of your back, letting you know that it's a hot one. So be careful out there. I hope everybody's doing well today. Uh, we are. We're uh, in the midst of uh, the aftermath of, I say aftermath, that sounds so uh, so uh, bad. Uh, we're we're, we're post-election, so we're getting ready to uh, get the feet on the ground and, and uh, get ready to start up another, another uh, wonderful year as the Seminole Nation employees get ready for the uh, fall events the new administration the activities that are going to be happening things of that nature uh we're going to be doing it with a of course you know a a safe public health emergency that's going on we're going to do it with the safe uh risk mitigations that we all have uh, masking um making sure we wash our hands making sure that everything is done in a safe manner to continue the operations that it is seminal nation so you know, as we move forward, uh, just stay positive. Everybody stay positive. Uh, let's let's get this thing rolling and do the best we can with um, our situation. And we'll be okay. Just like today, the schools opened up today. Uh, I think uh, Sasakwa opened up today. And the rest of our communities will be doing the same this week. So just be mindful and slow down in those areas, those safe zones. I know on the drive over here, uh, our offices are located, and for those of you uh, that don't know, we're located near the Pink Laundry. So I drive from there to um, roughly the Seminole Fire Department, cross the highway, and then come over dirt roads to KWSH. And so uh, in between is the uh, uh, Academy, Seminole Academy. So very, very cautious of uh, going through there. So just just uh, slow down and be mindful of, of the kiddos. But uh, if you have any if you have any first day pictures or anything like that of your kids, uh, send them over and we'll put them up on our Instagram and uh, s- select some and to uh, put up on our Instagram feed, which is our uh, Seminole Nation Communications photo feed. Uh, we're located at SimNat Oklahoma. So if you're on the Instagram, look uh, just type in Sim S E M. N-A-T, one word, oh, this is all one word, S-E-M-N-A-T, Oklahoma, Seminat, Oklahoma, and you get to see some of the fine folks and uh, adventures that we have within the communication department. we post them up there. Um, as we begin today's program, uh, we're going to start with a moment of silence, uh, but I did want to give um, a little bit of time to share with you, we had a good friend of ours uh, that passed this week, uh, Dina Brady. And from Kanawha, she's a good friend of the nation. She's always followed uh, what was going on, even though she uh, worked outside our area. Uh, she followed and would call in quite uh, uh, repeatedly, just seeing how things were, um, and just uh, just basically just giving support to the nation. And and throughout the years, uh, she was the general counsel secretary for for a little bit, uh, worked at Sendoc for a little bit, um, and um, you know we just wanted to give. Her and her family, the uh, 
the love, sending love out. Um, and through all of our relatives out there that have lost loved ones, you know, we give this time and, and at the beginning of the program to uh, lift them all up um, as, as their loved ones have walked on and families are left to continue down here on earth this journey. So we, we uh, lift up in healing and peace uh, So at this time. Moment of silence. Mado. Hey, Dennis. Is also, it's voting day today in Seminole County. For those of you who don't know, it's voting day in Seminole County. Voters will decide on the extension of a quarter cent sales tax to fund emergency services in the county. Uh, Proposition 1 calls for dividing 40% of the revenue equally between the eight fire departments in Seminole County. Proposition 2 is 30% will be split equally among the Conowa, Seminole, and Woka Ambulance Services. That's Prop 2. 30% Conowa, uh, Seminole, and Woka Ambulance Services. Proposition 3 states that the remaining 30% of the revenue will go to the county's 911 system. So three propositions on the ballot today. And uh, if approved, the tax extension will take effect January 1st, 2022, expiring in 2026. Uh, polls will be open today till 7 p.m. And so for more information, uh, including polling locations, contact Seminole County Election Board at 405-257-2786. You know, sometimes we don't think about uh, the efforts that these sales tax have on our communities uh it's important that we stay abreast of all the issues and what's going on um within our area and while similar nation days hasn't and again i repeat and i say hasn't officially been announced uh we remain in kind of a standby uh position as uh, public health officials compile data uh, for the decision makers of the Seminole nation days and so further information, we'll keep posting updates and specifics on the, our social media sites as well as um, being on the radio here. We'll, we'll be able to let Dennis know if anything changes. Uh, usually during the 830, 930 pro, uh, radio program, if I have an opportunity to get information, I usually push it out through then uh, at the 830, 930 uh, radio program. It's daily here on the radio so again it hasn't officially been announced as far as like any type of schedule or anything like that um these i I think i mentioned it last week the princess committee will be doing a impromptu video uh to be shown uh this september 16th i believe um more information on that um as well as uh the sindoc baby patch and again these are kind of on a on a on a holding pattern uh, and haven't officially been announced, even, although there have been some, uh, uh, an, a small announcement on the Sendoc uh, Facebook page that they will have the baby pageant. Just, uh, I just wanted to just say that uh, at this time, it hasn't officially been uh, put out that uh, Seminole Nation Days is, is a go. So just stand by. Everybody be patient. I know we want it. I know we want to have it, but uh, a lot of things are, are going on as, as far as public health and uh, decision makers, I'm sure, want to make the best effort. Uh, to get the uh, the right choice out there, so be patient, my Itawa. Stephanie Lambert, band chief of the Miccosukee Band, announces a special meeting on August 19th at 6.30 p.m. Miccosukee Band special meeting on August 19th at 6.30 p.m. It will be located at Vans on Highland, Vans Pig Stand on Highland and Shawnee, um, well, I might have to go Miccosukee Band, change my band, go to Vans and give me that pulled pork sandwich. Well, we also have a, um, she said, we also have a regular band meeting on Thursday, September 2nd at 6.30 p.m. So, again, that's Mississippi Band, regular band meeting Thursday, September 2nd at 6.30 with a special meeting prior to that, August 19th at 6.30. Uh, the regular band meeting location will be announced later. Uh, the September meeting will be to review bylaws and elect officers. Bylaws and elect officers. So, uh, if your band is having a meeting or you're interested in participating in the band, uh, contact your band chiefs, band uh, council reps, and or send us a line here, and we'll put you in contact with your band reps. Uh, you can send us a, a request in uh, seminolemedia at gmail.com, seminolemedia at gmail.com, or come by or contact us at the office located at uh, 630 North Main 
in downtown Seminole. We'll get you in contact with your, your respective bands. Thursday, August 26th at 7 p.m., a special called general council meeting will be held addressing the recent council petition. Uh, again, this is Thursday, August 26th at 7 p.m., special call general council meeting addressing the recent council petition. The next regular general council meeting will be held September 4th, September 4th at 10 a.m., which will uh, also have a new uh, group of council reps being sworn in as well as the administration. Uh, they'll be sworn in at 10 a.m. Again, at 10 a.m., the regular general council meeting at the Mickelson Commission. So the swearing-in ceremony will be held as well. Seminole Nation of Oklahoma's public transit continues to run the roads. And for more information on scheduling, contact Ms. Josie Fields at 405-294-3674. That's the Seminole Nation Public Transit, 405-294-3674. Uh, Rachel Dinwiddie and a crew down there will be happy to help you out and schedule you a ride. The Seminole Nation Adult Education has free GED classes at 630 North Main. I wonder where that's at. By appointment only. Call 405-716-6041 for more information, for more information down there. Sendoc, Seminole Nation Division of Commerce, has a number of jobs listed with an opening in Conowa. Currently, we're going to kind of highlight this. Uh, I usually gas up down there if I'm in that area. Um, Conowa has a full-time uh, store manager position that's opening at the River Mist location. For the full do- job description has um, Sendoc seeking a manager for Re- River Mist Retail. If you're interested in this, this is a manager position only, and it is not a casino position. This is not a casino position. The manager of the retail store is responsible for a shift in daily operations, administrative paperwork, and completing personnel document documentation. Must have a high school diploma or GED three or more years in retail experience and or related supervisor experience, computer literate with Microsoft Excel, Word, and Outlook Outlook as um, assistance, must be 18 years of age or older to sell beer, liquor, and alcohol, and then it must be able to lift 50 pounds. So if you want information on this, I uh, want to drop a resume into it, and check out the listings uh, for this job and other jobs that are related to Sendoc as well as the casino outlets as well. You can go to Indeed.com. That's I-N-D-E-E-D.com. Indeed.com. And then search the keywords there. You want to type in as a keyword, Seminole Nation. And the location will be Seminole, Wewoka, or Conwall. And it will definitely pull up uh, information on the specific jobs. So there's quite a few. Well, I say quite a few. There was quite a few Sindoc jobs when I looked at it last, maybe nine. Uh and then um, it also the casino jobs are located there as well. Also, for a job listing specific to the casino, you can go to the uh, Seminole Nation Casinos uh, dot com at, and they will uh, also pull up uh, the careers and all the job listings that are that they have there um, for the gaming. So you can check that out as well. And as far as Seminole Nation, like last week, we had the. Uh, Miss Angie Odovich here talking about Seminole Nation jobs. Um, you can lo- locate those at the Careers tab at the Seminole Nation website, sno-nsn.gov, sno-nsn.gov, and uh, look for the Careers tab at the top, and you can see what's down there. A lot of jobs, a lot of jobs. My favorite one is the bailiff. I'm going to find out who's the bailiff's. The bailiff has been open for a while, so we really need to get it. If you're a bouncer in a club, how about that? If you're a bouncer in a club, come come, come join us at, at Seminole Nation. We need you. <laughs> bouncer in the club, okay. Oh, let's see. Uh, we have some uh, birthdays here that I want to sh- give a shout-out to. We've got birthdays. we got Diane and Nero. Mm-mm, driving around with that little, that little bitty... Uh, puppy. She always got that little bitty dog riding around. I can't remember what that dog's name is, but she rides around the car and got that little bitty dog. That yeah, dog has its own uh, Sonic meal, I'm sure, when he gets gets the Sonic. But Diane Nero, happy birthday. Corey Groves, Corey Groves, happy birthday. Our own Zach Self in the IT department, happy birthday. Doug Isaacs from Conowa, happy birthday. Nina Pettit, Kevin Hill, Phoenix Bills, 
Alex Fish. Alex Fish. Uh, Simul Nation Honor Guard. Happy birthday. Sonia Harjo. Tracy Harjo. Jerome Hill. Cindy George. Glenora Bruner. Rexton Haley. Rexton Haley. Amelia Harjo. Crystal Lika. Herschel Wise. Herschel Wise. DeAmber Garcia. And Miss Martha Wind. All of you. We wish you a happy birthday. Happy birthday. And I can't forget, I cannot forget, we also want to wish Jeremy Fultz a happy, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Jeremy. Mark, this is your cue to put up a Jeremy Fultz birthday picture. So, we want to talk a little bit about the election. We have a new administration uh, coming up after September 4th, taking their seats. September 4th, so we want to talk a little bit about the election this week, and if you haven't heard already, uh, Brian Thomas Palmer defeated Anthony Dwayne Wood, also known as Buddy, at the recent uh, runoff election at, uh, that was held over the weekend. There were 942 voters that cast their ballot for this election in the runoff. 942 voters casting their ballot, so that was a good, a good turnout for, for this election. Uh, so we, we do want to thank everyone that participated in it. I do have a breakdown of the polling pos- positions and, and I kind of wanted to just talk a little bit about that. Uh, in the Sasaqua area in the polling positions, they had a tie of voters. They had 61 votes for, uh, Palmer, 61 for Wood. And in Strother, another tie, uh, coincidentally, uh, 21 and 21 for Palmer and Wood. And then you look at the Miccosukee area, which is the Mission Ground, the Election Board Headquarters area. Uh, the breakdown was uh, Brian Palmer 167 with uh, Wood 138. Palmer had 167 and Wood 138. Oklahoma City area saw uh, Wood with the lead of 45 and Palmer with uh, 42 votes. Shawnee area had uh, Brian Palmer with 54 votes and Buddy Wood with 27 in Shawnee area. And here's where the um, uh, dynamic shifts in the absentee vote. Absentee vote, you had 219 voters for Brian Palmer. That's 219 voters for Brian Palmer and 86 for uh, Buddy Wood. So, and again, the breakdown total was uh, f- uh, 564 for Brian Palmer and 378 for Buddy Wood which uh, is percentage-wise 59% Palmer, 40% Wood. So, again, you know, these, these this, is, this is how our democracy works, and we are very appreciative of the fact that folks turned out and did a good job. And a, a big shout-out to the election board, too. Uh, the election board, uh, led by Keith Mouse Haney and uh, Dr. Stephanie Bills, they really did a good job in organizing, making sure that the thing ran smoothly and there was no hiccups, and their team worked uh uh, steadfastly to make sure that uh, that things were done in the correct way. So we want to give a shout out to the election board, and don't can't forget Sue, Miss Sue Jim Boyd out there taking the calls, fielding the calls on a day to day basis out there at the election board. Uh, we we definitely uh, give give them a uh, super shout out for that work. Uh, I did talk to Stephanie, Doc, Dr. Bills over the weekend, and hopefully we'll get a chance to sit, have her sit down and. And get an interview with her because she's a really a, um, a unique uh, individual, tribal member, you follow band, uh, leading this charge. And so, you know, it, it's good things. Good things are happening in that sense. Uh, when we was at the uh, election, just kind of give you a paint a picture a little bit about the the Saturday evening. It was uh, was we was waiting the election results and in what was happening. Um, I had my daughter with me. She was um, helping me out with the camera. And we were sitting there, and it was just nice, cool, breezy evening um, and as the sun was going down. And some of you that seen the broadcast as we was doing it out there and live, the cell reception, cell service wasn't that good, so we went ahead and started filming. And so as we were filming and setting up and getting ready for the uh, uh, first results to be released, uh, I looked over my, uh, my car hood, and I seen a, a car approaching, and it parked, and out jumped this tall, lanky guy, and it was uh, Assistant Chief uh, Elect uh, Brian Palmer, and he stepped out and 
he was just he made me laugh because he as he came out as he got out of his vehicle and started walking over you could he was wearing boots and you could hear those boots as he's walking that clonk 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 and uh in that sound, you can sense the uh, kind of the urgency and and uh, I guess anxiety a little bit. And I said, "Hey, how are you doing? You doing all right? It's good to see you." So, what are you doing here? He said, "I couldn't wait." He said, "I just couldn't wait." He said, "I wanted to be somewhere." He said, "I," he said, "I had to uh, get out of the house." And I was pacing, so he wanted to come up there. And we had a really good visit. And we sat there and talked. Um, and and I was wondering. You know, when you put yourself in that position and, and as as an elected official and try to work uh, to do the right thing and to do those things that uh, the people want you to do, um, you really put yourself out there. And so I had to hand it to him. I said, you know, this you and well him and Buddy and in being able to uh, uh, make that move. And it was very evident that uh, you know he wanted to do those things for the nation he wanted to do do those things that he said uh, he was his platform you know most of it most evidently you know support the chief's interest but to be that person that's the last in the room to give advice or share advice and so either one of them um, you know were were sold out to the fact that the Seminole Nation is is their biggest love you know and so I, I'm, I was just so happy to see the voter turnout you know that the people have spoken in this matter and and there's some uh completion we can continue to move on we've got some um, um some things to do and we'll do it together and now you got a team in there and let's let's roll let's roll so congratulations to that team uh chief elect johnson as i get ready uh i i did share a little bit to during the uh, sun or Saturday evening broadcast on how the transition piece is going, um, my understanding, especially dealing with the uh, Seminole Nation days, uh, everything is going well. Uh, the communication uh, between all the officials are, are going well in the transition part. Uh, the day to day operations continue, uh, there is no slowdown. Um, situations regarding uh, ARPA funds and that nature are uh, are being uh, templates, I guess, are being set up to start dealing with that. And it's definitely going to be a situation where uh, strategy is important moving forward. And this was one of the platforms I know when I was sitting there talking to Brian that we're, that that was uh, definitely evident was uh, you know we're going to have some structure on on this uh, plan. Uh, and, and how we're going to utilize it. So I just encourage everyone out there to stay in contact with your band chief, stay in contact with your band representatives, uh, because it is going to take all of us to make sure that these things are done as this generational change uh, with his ARPA funds is something that we really need to take care of and to uh, be diligent in making sure that it's done and held the right way. Um, but uh, again, the talks are ongoing. Uh, as soon as I get any news, as soon as I get any official word, and I'll I will definitely put it out there in some form or fashion, uh, and and what we're, what's going on and what's happening. But I I can say assuredly that the uh, transition is going well, uh, transition going smoothly, and everybody's talking. So with that, we're going to bounce out. We got a busy day today. We got a lot of things we got to do, um, and just again. Another area, too, we keep talking about uh, uh, McGirt sovereignty, things of that nature. And this is the kind of the way forward we want to uh, m- have as a message for the Seminole Nation is that now, uh, rather than saying a McGirt issue or anything like this, it's more of a Supreme Court's decision affirming sovereignty. Supreme Court's decision affirming sovereignty. Supreme Court's decision affirming sovereignty. That's going to be our new uh, watch words and phrase in regards to the McGirt issue, but it's more or less the Supreme Court's decision affirming our sovereignty. Um, we haven't. We have to educate ourselves to know who we are. That's what I mean when I say teach the children. Eddie Banton Benai is no Ojibwe philosopher. Uh, Wallace Blackout, a Lakota Sioux, says, "So don't be afraid. What we." 
left behind leave it back there try to do some good let's try to take a step try to think something good and create our own history let's create our own history so let's think like a reservation <laughs> think like a nation and not a reservation think like a nation and not a reservation and everything will be all right Shout out to Sterling Harjo and his crew again. Reservation Dogs premiered last night. A a cast and crew of Stajats making big things happen on the FX network on Hulu. Some of y'all get that free Hulu trial just to watch that. So remember, y'all going to have to pay in about uh, two weeks. So, you know, you (laughs) you get that free trial. Y'all going to have to pay. Remember, it's going to cost something. So, but it was good. They shown the first two episodes. Uh, I watched it last night with my daughter and, and she laughed. I got to I got to tell you if you got church kids, uh church elders watching it, um there's quite a few f bombs, so just uh, just hang 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 loose. It's just a, one person's portrayal of how it is. So and some of y'all know that's the way it is, so but I'm going to give a shout out to uh Sterling and we're going to have a review actually. We're going to do a f- first published review of something. Uh that'll be forthcoming here shortly, so a big shout out to him. Doing great, great wonderful things. Mado Sterling. And Taika Waititi. Um Yeah, let's 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 go uh drink some water. Got the got the water here. Let's go drink some water. Let's stay cool. Let's go get some of that air conditioning. And uh, we'll be talking with you later. Um illustrious guest today is you. We lift you up today, whoever's listening to this. We're gonna lift you up. We're gonna lift you up. We're gonna say Make make good things happen the rest of the week. Mado Haramchi Chahlis. We'll see you again. <laughs>